Mr. Speaker, as a member of the House Foreign Relations Committee, I want to address the House on the challenges we face in Ukraine, the challenges in the Middle East with Israel and Iran, and in Taiwan and Asia. The world is watching and looking for American leadership. Iran has launched a telegraphed attack on Israel, sending over 350 drones and missiles last weekend. Seeing these missiles being intercepted above the Temple Mount emphasizes Iran's disregard for Muslim, Jewish, and Christian holy sites and their desire to take innocent lives. Iran and its actions continue to disrupt opportunities for peace in the Middle East. I was in Israel two weeks ago, one of over a dozen trips I have made to the Middle East in the last 30 years. Before the attack on October 7th, Saudi Arabia was on the brink of signing a peace agreement in joining the Abraham Accords. Formalizing the Saudi-Israeli relations would both, for both countries would achieve strategic and military goals ranging from defense to food security to innovation, thus bringing hope for more peaceful opportunities with moderate Arab nations. When the Ayatollah saw this, I believe he pulled the strings on proxy forces to stop these negotiations that resulted in Hamas's horrific attack on innocent Israeli citizens on October 7th that took over 1,200 lives and 200 hostages. Iran is one of the number one state-sponsored terrorists in the world, is number one. For years, the Iranian regime has been funding Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis to spread international chaos. Iran has directly or through its proxy killed hundreds of Americans that have been in the region. China is also threatening Taiwan and watching how the United States responds to other conflicts around the world. They are watching. The new axis of evil, Iran, Russia, China, and North Korea presents an ever-threatening, growing threat to the United States and our allies. This is a seminal moment in American and world history, I believe. Therefore, we cannot abandon our allies in their darkest time of need. Ukraine needs our support. For months, the Senate passed the supplemental aid package that has been held hostage by my Republican colleagues who some appear to be on the side of Russia. I don't get it. President Reagan and Senator McCain must be turning over on their graves. It's been over six months since the attack on October 7th, and what has the House done? Nothing. Wasting time on baseless impeachments, threatening a motion to vacate, close to shutting down government. But yet again, House Democrats have stepped in to save the day. We've always been clear. On day one, we're here to govern putting people before politics. We've extended the hand of bipartisanship to work on behalf of the American people and the security of our country. And we've demonstrated our words with action, passing and extending the debt ceiling, avoiding government shutdown three times, and finally passing our budget six months late. 195 Democrats have signed the discharge position to bring the Senate passed supplemental package to the floor for a vote. The House must pass the national security package this week. It will provide additional equipment for Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, with critical and security and military needs to defend their freedom, and therefore our freedom. Providing humanitarian aid for the Palestinians who have been horrifically uh, punished and suffered in Gaza, and Armenian refugees removed from their historical home in Nagorno-Karabakh, along with investments in border security to help alleviate challenges we have here. So I ask my colleagues, will you stand with freedom-loving democracies and help bring this bill to the floor and support Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan? Or, or will you stand with Putin and embolden his mafia of dictators to further attack our allies? That is the question. Your actions will show not only the American people, but history uh, where you stood in protecting the future of democracies. The world is watching. This is our Churchill Chamberlain moment. Will we be like Churchill and, and continue to be the beacon of light for freedom around the world? Or will we try to appease as Chamberlain did to the Nazi dictator Hitler that resulted in the cause of over 100 million deaths during World War II? That is the question. This is the moment. We must stand for freedom. We must pass a security package this week for Ukraine, for Israel, for Taiwan, and for freedom-loving people around the world. That is the challenge we face this week. I hope we are successful. I yield back the balance of my time.
The chair recognizes the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Klein, for 